Welcome to the Haunted Manor tutorial on how I made this kit. And today I have with me, uh, who agreed to do this with me, thank you very much, is my son, Harrison. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> I just want you to be naturally and like, watch this video with me for the first time, by the way. I haven't and, seen it. No, you haven't seen it. And oh, but you have seen this part because you, you did the fog, so you did an excellent job on the fog. Thank you very much. Yeah, but the fog kit doesn't work as well as hoped. Yeah, I kind of wanted the fog to be a little bit more sitting there, I guess, um, but it didn't. What do you think of my ghost horse purse? I think it's really cute. Say that five times fast. Ghost horse first, ghost horse first, ghost horse first, ghost horse first, ghost horse first. Pretty good, first. pretty good. Now, I'm not done yet with this entryway. I want to make bricks instead of just a plain facade, and um, I have to finish that wait time sign to make it actually move. That would but, be fun. Yeah. And my friend, Just Tasmic, she did this, so I just wanted to give her a bit of a shout out because she's amazing, and that's really cool on my little tree display. I like your little Halloween setup. Yeah, it's kind of like a Nightmare Before Christmas-esque feel to it. All right, let's get down to it. So you're going to get this. <laughs> that was fast. You're going to get this kit, and there's two sections of it. So this is the bigger section, and it has a puzzle in it. This is going to go really fast because basically you're... Oh, this tool, though, I have to explain about that little tool. It's a little grabby tool, not for your eyes. Oh, my gosh, we're going way too fast. There's paint. Let's paint. <laughs> Glue. Glue. We're speed and, editing. oh, that's um, chocolate chip poops. So I don't... No, you have to take them out. These are... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is that poops. grabby tool I was telling you about. It has a little sponge to it. And that's just plain white acrylic paint and you daub it off, but you can use any sponge. Um, using a sponge during this part is really good because it lays on top of the wood and doesn't seep down into all those nice grooves that was made by, that were made by the laser cutting machine. I mean, I drew them. Otherwise you fill it in and all the details would yeah, be lost. Yeah, and then the details are lost. Oh yeah, thank you. So um, I also added a little bit of a light yellow to the windows to make it look like they glow because they don't have uh, cut out windows. And the reason for that is because I had done a collaboration with Amuse Bouche, Melissa Chan Stone, and she uh, did the interior. So I gave her full wall space without having to deal with windows, cut windows. Um, and I figured everything here that we're watching is self-explanatory so they can just watch along and get the tips. But if something comes up that I think is pertinent, then I'll And for that part, in. you don't have to be very careful with how you lay down the green because it's just going to get overlaid. Because then it gets overlaid. Now, your, your puzzle will look better than mine because I didn't glue down that piece. Um, in which case, you could just paint right on top the whole thing with inside the puzzle. Um, but just make sure that you take the little chocolate chip poops out it's with important. like a pin, a needle. That's very important. See all those little chocolate chips all over the place. So because I didn't glue down mine, um, I had to take it off and use it, but you could just directly paint on top and you don't have to use the colors that I use, but I did use, um, a titanium white. Um, it's just a basic acrylic paint and it's a white color. And then again, with that green, that's a mossy green and I'll put everything in the description. So there's no, there's no worries that you don't have to go like, well, yeah, if you want to scroll back and look, it helps me out with my views, <laughs> but <laughs> always dry fit, always dry fit your pieces to make sure that you know where they go, how they go and that you're not missing anything and how you want it to be before you glue it down. So. Cause you don't want to glue it down and then realize, ah, that's uh, the wrong piece. I did it wrong. Right. So even the front doors, you want to make sure that the front door is flush down onto the bottom. And then the second floor door, um, that's where it will tell you where to put the second floor balcony. I like this tight bond, quick and thick, because you know you like it quick and you like it thick. Mm. And, <laughs> I know you hate when I say that, but um, it is a really good glue because see, once you put it down, like in a minute, you could pick it up. 
So then go ahead and do the second, the sides with the top windows, but do not put the doors on until after the balcony floor um, because you may figure out later that, oops, it there wasn't, wasn't enough room. Properly. Yeah, it wasn't aligned. And then you wanna glue the edges of the sides to the back of the front. That's very important. We don't wanna see the edge on the front showing. So it will be on the back of the front. Does that make sense? And just hold it there and it will stay. Um, just give it a few minutes and it will stay. That's all it needs. And there we go, we have it st standing up. And then look at my hands are like really weird. It's the position of the... <laughs> so this is where I'm showing you. So you want it to be flush. You don't wanna see the edges. You want just the front facade. Now I'm just dry fitting the... So you see how it says there's an ugly side and a pretty side? So I'm gonna dry fit. This is the... Pretty side up. Balcony floor. See, it needs to go flush underneath the door. So that determines where your balcony will rest. And then I measure it to make sure that that edge will be glued all the way through that middle. And then there's those side pieces. They get glued onto the side just like this. It's pretty easy, self-explanatory. Those get glued and, But on. this is the part. See this one, how one, one is smaller than the other because there is a smaller side on the right than on the left. So that's what I wanted to make sure everyone knew that there's a, the right side is the skinnier side. So just make sure, dry fit everything and then you'll know. And then that rests on top, but you glue it up when it's all painted. Um, and it has that little piece that juts out in the front. That's for the columns. So I'm using a pistachio green to color this. I don't paint the floor or the roof balcony but I do paint this, but make sure you go through and... Remove the little square poops. <laughs> Chocolate chip poops. <laughs> Otherwise, it's gonna clog up with paint and you won't, you'll, you'll be like... You'll lose detail. Mm. Yeah, you'll lose detail, thank you. Yeah, that's right. It can be tempting to jump to the fun painting process, but you have to go through every step. Yeah, you gotta prep it. Um, so this is where I show you that I glued this already. Uh, and then you want to wait to put those, at this point, you then put those side doors on. See, because if it goes over, if it goes over that balcony edge, then that back piece won't get flush. Okay. Yeah. So always dry fit before you glue it back on. But that's enough right there. I kind of gave you a guide of where to put it, but I still want every little piece warps a bit. So you... It, everything's different. So then you just make sure that you put some glue right on that edge and that holds that piece. You wanna make sure that it's flush. I was showing that you want that eighth inch overhang on both sides. There'll be a little bit of an overhang on either side. So make sure it's even on both sides. That's and because you're gonna do like you did with the front where you're gonna glue the sides correct. to the front and not glue the front correct. to the sides. Correct, correct, yeah, right here. You can see, just add some glue on those touching edges and so that you don't see that black line on the front. You're gonna see it on the side, but no one's really gonna be detailing on the side. And then just make sure it's flush and then rub off excess glue. If you don't rub off that excess glue, it will clump up. It dries clear, but it, it does clump up a bit. There, oh, there is a top and a bottom. <laughs> so make sure that the flowers are on the top. You see the flowers on the top? Right there, I'm showing up. Flowers on the top. Because I did it wrong and I had to re-glue it. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you put the flowers on the top. It's actually my hidden Nikki that you told me to do. You said you should, instead of a hidden Nikki, do a hidden Nikki. So I put my logo. A little design element. Yeah, I like to throw that in all my little pieces. So far, I've put them in all of them. Oh, try and keep Keep your eye out for them Yeah, all. keep your eye out for the hidden Nickies. All right, so. If you find every hidden Nicky in every set, you get nothing. <laughs> and then at this point, you can go ahead and glue everywhere that's touching. So all along the top of that balcony piece, and then so that it touches the building. 
It's really pretty simple, I promise you. Anybody can put this together. That's pretty much done. Now we're gonna just put the base on it. So after it's been dry for like five minutes, you can actually move it around. Um, That's quick. Yeah, really quick. You just wanna make sure that the back is flush. Not that back, see, I did it wrong again. As I was doing it, I go, oh, oops, no, I gotta put on those, <laughs> the little balconies in the very, very back. So just make sure um, there's room for that. So you just, anywhere that it's gonna touch, you add glue. And then, oh, I got glue on my fingers there. All right, so I put it on and I was like, oh yeah, that's great. And I move it around. You have just a, a minute to like move it around and a little paintbrush to take off excess glue. But it dries so fast that you have to be really quick of when you want. And then I was like, oh oops. yeah, oops, I need to. Oh no, that's okay. So the back of their touches is okay. Um, the second floor can go wherever you want. See that? And the roof just lays on, on top and you just glue that. I didn't, um, I didn't want to score or anything because I wanted you to finish it out first, how you want it to be, especially if you buy the amuse-bouche kit, um, she will show you where to put that. So I didn't really score that for you. Um, so you do see there's two smaller side. There's one smaller side. That's the smaller side. Uh, and then there's a, bit bigger it's just I did a bad design I'm sorry to say but instead of like it was really difficult to go back if I had to fix that so just note that one side is smaller <laughs> it's kind of wonky <laughs> it gives it interest I think no one's perfect no one's perfect I am but <laughs> I guess you clearly not. you're not and then I I made a boo-boo and I didn't do an overhang well there. So uh, it doesn't matter. You'll no, do better on yours. No one's going to see. Them. I also glued both sides, like not glued. I um, painted both sides on the other balcony pieces. I didn't because you don't really see them. But when you turn around the back, if you're going to finish it off, um, you, will. you want to make sure that it has a pretty back or you don't, I don't care. Maybe you don't. Uh, so I don't know where you want to put your second floor. That's something you'll have to determine. But now we're gonna deal with the front last piece, which is the pillars. Now you open up your mini bag. Yeah, that little mini bag. And lay out all your pieces, and they're just gonna go just like this. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then that middle piece goes, bloop, bloop. Okay, so everything paint white is what I was trying to explain there. And then inside that little part of the, I'm gonna paint green. And that edge right there of the, skinny piece of that three long flat pieces so it looks so it looks like a detail mm -hmm. so it's just green on that edge and everything else white that's where the pillars will go and then that flips upside down Boop. right now it kind of looks like a tentacle <laughs> so i painted everything white i used um the Sponge tool. Sponge tool so that it doesn't clog up the lines. And then I just painted this, the moss green on, on my other one. I did pistachio, but I just grabbed the wrong paint, but I thought it, it does pretty good. Make sure it lines up. And that's, you can tell just how you see it there with all the details. That's exactly how it looks. So just make sure yours lines up like mine lines up. Paint the D green. Yeah, <laughs> D, it's just a little window piece. Um, and then you put those little round squares. That's where the pillars will go. Make sure that you paint all of that white and it'll have to take a couple coats because the edges, they, um, they don't take paint very well. So you have to do a few. Yeah, something about the burnt wood yeah. has an issue when you apply the paint that it comes extremely thin. Yeah. And then it dries kind of funny, so you'll have to do multiple coats. You do coats. multiple coats and it'll be fine. It will work eventually. See you there. Yeah, just keep at it. See, like that, like, sucks it up. <laughs> but anyways, so just paint it. Paint it all where you're going to see it. And that's that edge that I was talking about. That's the only part that needs to be painted on that. And then you just layer it like a little sandwich. A little and ice cream sandwich. A little ice cream sandwich. See how that green part goes in? It's the skinny part. But on the back, it was all flushed. Uh, and then we just put on the roofing tiles. 
it's just an easier way than making tiny little roof tiles individually. <laughs> that would take a lot longer. That would take a little bit longer. Like you could, you could add on to it if you want. And you could paint it different colors. It doesn't have to be the colors that I used. It's and just a guide for how right, you did yours. Right. It'd be interesting to see if anybody else does anything. Haunted Mansion Halloween. Mm hmm A little Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. overlay. And this is tricky. It will go in, but it just takes some finagling. Um, just stick with it. It'll, it'll happen. It's just the perfect fit. That's why. So just rub off any excess glue and put your topper on. Guess what? That's it. It's finished? Yeah. So you can pick up that miniature wooden haunted manor kit on my website, nicoladell.com. Newly launched. Newly launched. You can uh, visit me on Instagram at nicoladell. Remember that's with a K and two L's on a Dell. All right. And then <laughs> I talked about the interior kit. You can go ahead and get that from Melissa Chan Stone, AKA Amuse Boosh. Check her out on her Instagram and you can pick up a really sweet looking interior. Interior sweet. <laughs> okay. And uh, then I want to say a big shout out. Thank you to Harrison. That's me. Yeah. Abomination Creations. Check him out on Instagram. You like to do some illustration work, um, mostly dealing with strange cryptids. Yeah. Creatures. D and D, Dungeons and Dragons. Hell spawns. Yeah. So definitely check out his work. He's a growing artist, and he's doing really well, and I'm very proud of him. And then. <laughs> A big thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you so much, and I look forward to doing another tutorial with you again, Harrison. Oh, thank you. I look forward to doing a tutorial with you again. Okay. Okay. That's it for now. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.